the Lord. Remember I said on the first night, on Wednesday night, the title of the message was The Sound of Freedom. Man, it sounded like there was some noise going on. It sounded like there was some freedom tonight. Amen. I still say tonight, just let freedom ring. Amen. Yes. Let freedom ring. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. And certainly what the presence of God makes all the difference, doesn't He, tonight? He makes everything tonight. And we praise Him for it. What a difference when the Lord comes upon the singers and anoints the singing tonight. Anointed singing and comes upon and what a difference between the good and the great sermon is the presence of God. We want to glorify Him. We thank Him tonight. We want Him to touch us tonight. Pray He use us again. Tonight, to proclaim His Word. In Amos tonight, we'll get right on in to the Word of God. In Amos, the book of Amos and the Minor Prophets, almost sandwiched right in between Joel. <laughs> you'll find there in the Word of God and you'll find between Obadiah. Not Noel, but Joel. <laughs> Joel and Obadiah, you'll find Amos. Amos chapter 3, verse 12. And this will be the title of tonight's message. It will simply be picking up the pieces. Picking up the pieces. Amos chapter 3, verse 12. Won't you please stand again if you would tonight. The reading of God's Word. There's one text here tonight. Try not to keep you too long on your feet there. Amos Chapter 3, verse 12. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out the mouth of the lion, two legs for a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out of that well in Samaria in the corner of a bed and in Damascus in a couch. Amen. You may be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. Amos was... Uh, Amos was a herdsman that God called to be a prophet of God. Who better to understand some of the metaphors here in this particular text than I suppose someone who dealt with various animals and things as well. Knew a little bit about livestock. Here in the Word of God, and God seemingly takes many things in nature, doesn't He? And He relates it to spiritual there are great truths all around us. In Job, he said, if you look to creation, it will teach you. Creation will glorify the Lord, doesn't it? You see the handiwork of God all around you in everything that God has made. The Bible says God has made it all, and He is a builder, isn't He? He is not just a builder, He is a master builder. Amen? It's one thing for someone to take something and make something out of it. But God can take nothing and make something out of it. Amen? Amen. This is how the Bible says and in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, uh, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it goes on down in every various day. And you know God made something and He looked upon it and it was good. I never did see anything because of God's character. He is good Himself and everything that He does is good. In fact, James says in 117, every good and perfect gift comes down from above. Amen? Amen. But you're a master when someone can take little and make much. And that's what the Lord so many times does again and again throughout His Word. Last night, we were called in part of the sermon, I said that the Lord took the seven, remember the loaves and two fish, and He fed 4,000, not counting the children as well, and they still filled up seven more baskets full. In other words, they had leftovers, didn't they? God is not just a God of enough. He is a God of more than enough. Amen. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think according to, excuse me, according to the power that worketh within us. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or to think you mean somewhat of these minds that God has given us, what we can conjure up? There is no limitations with God. I believe it said all things are 
possible to those that believe. I'm a believer. Amen. You're a believer. Amen. I believe the word of God. Some things for the time as hides away the Lord there within the desert. They've been following him, his disciples and men, and followed him for those three days out in the desert. And Jesus had compassion. The good shepherd saw their sheep hungry and he fed them. Amen. He feeds you. He'll feed you the word of God. Amen. It's one thing the Lord sustains us physically, but also he'll sustain us spiritually. For man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. They follow him. They follow him as Jesus slipped into the boat and came to the other side of the shore. And there the Pharisees and the Sadducees had greeted him upon the shoreline. Those religious leaders. And you know as they, as I said last night, they entwined within the midst. Be careful now because they were trying to feed the crowd something else. And like a lot of folks out there in the world and even standing in a many modern day pulpit are trying to feed a lot of things. Amen? Amen. Now goats are just about, the old myth about goats are, they'll eat just about anything. They love trash. I'll tell you what, when the goats, but the difference is in the sheep, they're kind of picky. They have to have green pasture. They have to have steel waters. The shepherd feeds the sheep. You know, when you're following Jesus, when you're following Jesus, you're following the Word. Now, wait a minute, you hear me? When you're following Jesus, you're following the Word of God. For John says, he said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And then verse 2 says, all things were made by Him and was not anything that made that was made. And Colossians says, not only the visible, but the invisible as well. Amen. The Lord made all things. There's things because me and you, we cannot see with the natural eye. We see around us, we live in this whole secular and materialistic world. We tangible things around us and which we can touch and see and hear and feel and so forth. And God has made, but He's also made the invisible thing. The things that if we were to pull back the scenery and look within the invisible realm and into the spiritual, into the supernatural, supernatural realm, we would also see, we would see those holy angels. We would see those demonic spirits, those fallen angels as well. I believe sometimes folks do not be surprised. Many folks sometimes think that there are so sanctified, certain sanctified places that the devil will not come. And even some might think he will not come to church, but he will. Amen. Told he came in one church and he came down and sat down on and everyone fled out of the church and came down and sat beside a man on the front row. Everyone else got up and they fled out of the church. He asked him, he said, sir, why didn't you leave? Aren't you afraid? He said, no, I've been married to your sister for years. <laughs> The devil does not 